piece of wood is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. They're mounds. Mounds. The, nest. the mounds are their nests. And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know what made the picnic log disappear. You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is yes. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding, picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Huh? Amazing Lily! <laughs> but it doesn't have wings like a bird. They have flaps of skin under their arms that they use like a parachute. Oh, so they don't really fly. They glide, like a person on a hang glider. Cool! Wow. Scientists think they do it to escape danger and to save the energy they would use climbing around. I don't think it likes the light. I'll turn this off. Listen. It's an owl! I really want to see an owl. Then let's head this way. <laughs> wow! I think it's a great horned owl. They're great hunters. They prey on rabbits, squirrels, and even skunks. Those are big animals for a bird that size. Is that a great horned owl too? That must be the female. It's higher. So you can tell the males from the females just by listening. Look out! Ah! Look, a different one. Cool face. Ooh, ooh. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. I'll say, I think this one is a barn owl. And it <laughs> doesn't hoot like most owls do. It shrieks. You know, I was a teeny bit nervous about being in the dark. You were? You know I was. Oh, it's okay, Willow. <laughs> but it turned out to be wonderful. Listen, you can hear the animals that are out at night. It's like a song. A night song. Have you noticed 
Cause the night has a rhythm And a melody all of its own And the music that goes along with them Is the sparkle of stars in the moonlit sky Goes on and on and on Night song, night song Grab a shooting star and sing along Night song, night song It's a magical sound, are you What is this stuff? This stuff, Gorby, is mucus. What's mucus? This stuff, Gorby, the same green stuff that comes out of your nose. Whale well, boogers? Ew. Ew. Uh-oh. Whales don't need to surface for long to breathe. They shut their blowhole and then dive back underwater. Inside, everybody. <laughs> Whales are humongous! <gasps> Whale song! Wow! It's so loud! That's so the whale can be heard by other whales from far away. <sighs> I really hope it'll sing with us. Let's find out! Hello! We are the Polos! And we'd be honored if we could record you singing with us. You and your baby, how cute. Make a melody, it sounds just like a song to me. The song could be a warning or a friendly hello. High like a turbo, way down low. It's a language only whales can speak. Sounds like a song to me. Though I think all that bumping did some damage. Audrey, what's our status? Hopscotch, mountain top, shindig valley. Yep, definitely some damage. But it's nothing I can't fix. Okay, which tools am I gonna need? A screwdriver? A wrench? Or whatever this thing is. Thanks, guys, but I got this. Giant polos, you play, I'll stay. Yay! <laughs> you say so. Uh, okay. Goes there. Polo's a great engineer, but what if she can't fix the polo boat? <gasps> we'll all be stuck here forever! 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 Stay calm, Chester. Get your mind on. Something else? <laughs> I got it! Ooh, a beach ball! I love beach balls! <laughs> this engine is totally seized. It needs a top-to-bottom rebuild. I found some spare parts below deck. I 
was saving these to build a dancing robot, but I can do that next week. Ready, Gorby? I got it! I got it! I, I don't got it. Ball! <laughs> Yay! Ball! Aha! Ah! The wind's really starting to blow. Ah! The ball! Ah! All that clanking tells me you don't think any of these will make the engine work again. <sighs> nope. We need something else to get the polo boat moving. the wind would stop. I don't. I'm having an engineering moment. Wow, a sail made out of palm leaves. That's brilliant, Willow. Thanks. Seeing the wind push those leaves around gave me the idea that a whole bunch of leaves could catch a whole bunch of wind to push our boat. The wind will press on the sail and make it puff out. This force will push the pull boat forward and I'll use these levers to steer. Then it's Bye Bye Island. There's an insect pushing a ball of poop. It looks like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay. This time, I'm going to say it. Yuck! Where's it going? Yeah, if they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty! They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. They've got a dirty job that someone's got to do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poop, would you? Lily, wherever you find hermit crabs, you usually find shells around it, too. I hope so. Thanks, Chester. <laughs> nice. <gasps> More. Bye-bye. Bye, Nash. Ooh, these will 
things are pretty. <gasps> My shells? Wh where did they go? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nope. <laughs> Polos, have any of you seen my seashells? They're gone! Gone? No way! We'll help you search for them. Where's Nash? <laughs> uh... <laughs> ah! <Ooh. gasps> right there. Oh, sorry. It's okay, Nash. We'll rebuild it later. We have shells to find. I think we solved the mystery. Really? A hermit crab. Lots of hermit crabs and shells. Yes, we found them. But why did they take them? Hermit crabs don't grow their own shells. They live inside ones that other creatures leave behind. Like hand-me-down clothes? Wow. What happens when one grows too big for its shell? It leaves it behind and looks for a bigger shell until it finds one that makes it a perfect fit. Interesting. Whoa, that's neat. <laughs> it's like we did trying on different sun hats. I love collecting seashells, but these hermit crabs need them more than I do. Enjoy, little crabbies. Need any help building your sand castle? Aw, that's nice, Lily. Definitely. Of course. <gasps> At least it has antler holes now. <laughs> Makes it a perfect fit. <laughs> oh, Chester. <laughs> I think somebody else has found a perfect fit, too. Right, Hermit Crab? 